Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live photo show on the Facebooks. And I've been saying, or Facebooks, YouTubes, I've been saying photo show, it is photo moment, and I've been saying photography show, but the truth is that it's photo in the sense of still photo and moving photo, i.e. video slash film, because we do talk about both here. I ain't changing the name, it's still gonna be photo moment because that's kind of cool. But um, I gotta start emphasizing the video side of this more because we do go back and forth quite a bit between the two. And uh, today's thing is, is a fun, funky little thing that not too many people are gonna need, but we are going to have some fun talking about it. Um, real quick, yesterday's show was great. Yesterday we talked about problems with clients uh, when a client goes bad, I think was the name of it. And I had a lot of great feedback from you guys, from the audience, both live and afterwards. It was awesome to see the comments. I think 99.9% .9 of the people commenting were basically on my side on this. And that's kind of be expected because I'm the one telling the story. It'd be really interesting to get the client in here to tell their story, but <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Um, Hopefully, you know, like I said yesterday, hopefully I wasn't being unreasonable, but I appreciate you watching. If you haven't seen it, um, click the link that's going to show up right there and you can uh, watch that video and comment on it. Get your, put your feedback in there on what happens or what to do when clients go bad. And again, thank you for being here today and commenting on today's show. So a quick, I've seen a question coming in, off topic question, thinking about buying a Teradek Video Pro, good move. Yes and no. Um, I think it's great hardware. I've done some reviews on that. We'll stick that video link right here. God, I love this thing. There's a point and it appears. It's so cool. Definitely watch that video. It is, once I figured out how to use it properly, which the, which the documentation is rubbish and the company's support is not great, I had really good results with it, but I've been getting better, more consistent results using the new Wirecast Pro to actually do the streaming, which means feeding my, my signal to another computer as opposed to the little video box, which is kind of a drag because it does require a whole other computer, but that has been more reliable. And I say the new Wirecast, which is I think version seven because the previous Wirecast, I had so many problems with, I was like nuclear on, I was so upset about it. Uh, but the new version has been working very, very reliably for me. I'm only using it as a streaming encoder though, not doing anything else with it. The video, when it works, it works beautifully, but it has a habit of just going, I'm not gonna work today. And there's nothing you can do to get it to work. If you're on the road though, if you're traveling, you're broadcasting from a remote location, um, then it is kind of the, the way to go. And uh, we can certainly talk about that more. But if you have specific questions, attach them to the video, that was already linked up there. We can't link it again, but attach it to that video and uh, we'll try and address any questions there. And if there's big enough stuff, I can certainly do another one of these videos on it. So again, welcome everybody. Okay, so today we're talking about this guy right here. Let me get the right camera up. This is it. This is the Pocket Ultrascope from Blackmagic. It is a very simple little box. You can see it's very, very small. This is awesome. It is USB on one end, USB 3 and simple SDI on the other. I wish that it had a HDMI input. I think that would make it more usable for a lot more folks because not everybody's running it, running SDI, but, um, but that's what it is. So what the hell is it? If you're familiar with the world of video, this cables everywhere. If you're familiar with the world of video, then you know that uh, the way that you monitor your colors are through something called scopes, vector scopes. You can view vector scopes in a whole variety of ways. And this allows you to see whether your colors are balanced, whether your black is below zero or above it, your whites are above 100 or below it, or wherever you want them to be. Sometimes broadcast it below 100, some people record it higher than 100, it just depends on what you're doing. Point is, you need to be able to monitor it. So it's just like if you're going into, into Photoshop with stills and opening up an image and looking at the histogram. In fact, you do have a histogram on the scopes as well. But with video, you're generally looking at something called an RGB parade and um, and other types of vector scopes. And that's what this whole thing does. So it's a piece of hardware that plugs into your computer and then puts vector scopes up on the screen. Let me, I'll show you real quick and then we're gonna come back to it. So that's what you get on the screen. Now the video you're gonna see of me in the corner is gonna be out of sync. A little, actually, no, it's, it looks like it's in sync. Well, that's cool. Okay, for some reason I thought it was out. Um, and this allows us to do all kinds of color monitoring. So, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. We're gonna take a look at it. First, I wanna talk about how hard it was to get this thing connected. So here's the deal. Um, I talked to Blackmagic several times about it. Essentially, they just haven't updated their drivers. They won't tell me or haven't told me if it's because they're having issues with it or if it's just because they got other things to do and haven't gotten to it. Maybe the product wasn't that popular, so they just are kind of letting it languish. I don't know. But the problem is it the drivers were only supported for the previous operating system, so 10.11. 
11, right? This is Mac OS 10, 12. And this is Mac. On Windows, it's different. There's, I have no idea, but it does, it does work on Windows as well. Um, so they don't have drivers to work on Mac OS 10.12, so Mac OS Sierra, only on 10.11 and 10.10 you know, prior to that. OK, so not the end of the world, right? I've got a ton of Macs in here. I have I had uh, two Macs in here plus another, my wife's old iMac, uh, old um, laptop at home, all running prior to Mac OS Sierra. The problem is that not a single one of those would support the hardware because the hardware has really high graphics requirements. So it requires a modern computer and by modern, I mean within, let's say, two years old, um, all of which are going to be capable of running Mac OS Sierra, which means almost all of which will already be running Mac OS Sierra, but it can't run a Mac OS Sierra. So real problem. So like I said, I went through three different systems, couldn't get it to work, was about to ship it back, and then I had an idea. I ended up installing Yosemite, that's the previous one, right, 10.11, on an external drive, and I'm now, I've now booted my laptop with my MacBook Pro Retina you know, laptop, um, not the new touch strip one. Don't have that. But I, this is like a I don't know, year and a half old or two year old laptop. Uh, and now I'm running that one on Yosemite again, just off an external drive. And now finally I can use it. So it took a bit to get it working. So if this is something that you need or you want, keep this in mind. You're going to require newish hardware, but an older operating system. They will not give me a timeline of if or when they're going to get this thing updated for Mac OS Sierra. So. That's that's what we've got there. Um, let's take a look at the scope. So oh, before we go in here, so I I just got this working this morning. So this is a first look. We're going to go through the options that are there. I do not know fully how to use it yet. Um, and in fact, there are well, other than being features in here that I'm I'm sure are there that I haven't played with yet. Uh, I am looking at scopes that I'm not personally familiar with how to read, so I don't necessarily know how to optimize my signal for them. So I have to learn all of that before I can really truly make this picture, which is why I got this, to make this camera look its best possible, plus to make this camera match with, with this camera. And the way that you do all this kind of color matching is using these kind of things, color chip charts. Okay, that's a crappy way to look at it. Let's just go back to here. Um, using these color chip charts. So that's what you really want to do. You bring up these color chip charts and you start matching levels and colors and so on. So let's take a look at the software. So here we go. Um, if we jump like out of full screen mode and when you first launch it, it looks like this. There we go. You get two views. And you can go up here to the view menu. You can choose what you want on the left, any one of these seven options, and what you want on the right. And so that's that's what you get um, if you just go into standard view. And oh, I do want to mention it, when you when you run this, first of all, it has to be at 1920 or 1080 resolution or above, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you realize that Retina resolution that was probably way beyond that, at least on a standard 15-inch MacBook Pro running in its default mode, it says. You don't have high enough resolution to go full screen. Turns out this is not retina optimized, which, you know, that's one of those like, really? Retina screen has been around for how many years now? So clearly the drivers on this thing, again, are outdated. They really, really need to update the drivers for this, not only for Mac OS Sierra, but to make it retina as well. And frankly, that's going to help when you're looking at this really fine details of your color scope, seeing that extra high resolution would be kind of nice. <laughs> but for this broadcast, the way that it syncs up, it actually runs at 1920 20 by 1080, so it fills the screen perfectly. So let's go back to this and go full screen. I simply go view full screen or command F and it brings it up. And now we've got all of our views. So top left RGB parade or YUV. You can look at it either way. You can turn color on or off for that. I love seeing the color on there. Haven't quite figured out what the gamut does yet. And you can zoom in on this. So just to give you an idea of what it is we're looking at, this is zero. So that's black right there. And then 100 is up here. It's interesting. So you've got zero to 100 scale on the right and I don't remember if, I don't think that's IRE. I forget what this scale is on the left that's going up to 700, which is our, our peak. Um, I forget if that's IRE or something else. I don't think that's IRE. Anyway, this is the one that I'm used to looking at, zero to 100 scale. That's what, that's how I think, that's how I know color. And even here I'm looking at going, well, is it really? I'm not sure, because I don't have anything. Oh, wait, here, we can do this, this is white. So I can bring this up, yeah. So there we go. So we can see that my white is just under 100, which is probably where I want it to be. I don't want this thing to be pure white. But also, if I look at black, and I don't have something solid black in here, but there's my middle gray, and that is going to want to be somewhere probably around 50, maybe a little bit under, because I like it to be a little bit crunchier. But you can see, now let's see if I can do this all at once. You can see my RGB here, and also this view here, this um, this scope here, that is showing me the same thing, but just in a single 
uh, a luminance value. So this is just the luminance. This is the red, green, and blue channel separately. And I realize as I've put this up in front of my mouth, it's harder to hear me. Um, but this allows us to do things like, let me zoom into this because it allows me to do that. I can go across and make sure that my red, so it's better if I do this. So if I do this, then you can see more clearly. Um, make sure that my red middle and my green middle and my blue middle are all at the same level. And the reason that that's important is because if they're not, then you're going to have a color cast, right? If the red channel, if I'm looking at the gray and the red channel is higher, that means I'm going to have a red cast to it. Blue is lower. It's going to be a yellow cast. So you want those to be even to get an adequate color, to get a, um, an accurate color, rather. And then there's your levels. What is black and what is white? And that is definitely where something like this comes in. So I've got a bunch of different charts, but here's kind of a very standard. Let me go back to this view. Here's a very standard color chip chart for video. Uh, so I need to fill the frame with this. And this is one of the things I got to figure out. I can go into here and, oops, wrong button. I can go into here and, damn it. Seriously, I'll get this figured out one of these days. I can zoom in. So I'm in the bo bottom right here. I can zoom into the picture here, right? So I could fill the frame if I held this straight. I could fill the frame with this, but that's not affecting the scopes. And when I zoom in here, it's just zooming into the scope. It's not zooming into the frame. So what I really want to do is not have to put a telephoto lens on this camera to fill the frame with this, but I want to somehow zoom into the picture, but actually have that monitoring up here. So I don't know if it can do that or not. I'm kind of hoping it does because that would make a lot of sense. But with this up, and you can kind of see this happening up here. So let's see, we're looking at the screen. Look up here, you can see that line right there. That's, let me see if I can, can I do this? Let's set this down. I'm trying to get my hands free here. Here we go. Okay, and then I can zoom into this screen here. Ha ha, now we got it. So there's the white, right? So that if we go back over here, there's that white panel and there's a black panel and all these shades of gray. So if we go back up here and zoom back in, there's my white, the black is somewhere down here. Now I've got all this other stuff in here so I can't really see where the black is. But the point is that I'm gonna wanna get these so that my white is near 100 and my black is near zero. And then we have accurate color. At least that's, that's the theory. So this also has this kind of parade that I'm completely forgetting what this is called and I have no idea what the difference is here. So that's something I'll have to learn. Over here on the bottom left, we can see a histogram, which is a very traditional, this is how I'm used to, let's zoom back out here so you have something to, uh, C. There we go. So this view over here is a very traditional histogram that if you're a photographer is going to be very, very familiar. And we can see, see here that my black is just below. So that's great. My whites, I don't have any white in here. So again, if I bring up the white card, there we go. So my whites are below peaking, which is good. So I think that my, my range, my black to white levels on this camera are very good. It's just my mids. My gamma doesn't feel quite right. And I want to make sure that my colors are accurate. You also have the ability to turn on logging in here, which when you start logging, it starts recording all the stuff that goes on here. And I haven't totally figured this out yet, like when it updates, um, but you can get info and data in there that shows up and then you can go back and look at, again, a first look, haven't really played with it yet, so I'm not quite sure how that works. Clear that out and you can save it and export it as well, or you can just go back to the Histogram view. And then you get your audio too. So this is my audio, I'm on two channel audio here. So we can see in here my audio levels if I wanted to, I could go look at the different channels for this phase meter, which I have absolutely no idea how to read. So that's going to be fascinating to look into this. You can see as I'm talking, it's kind of bouncing here, but it's not going out. And I don't know what, I don't know what that means. So that's going to be fun to figure out. Um, and then two different meters, VU meters and decibel meters. So the VU meters is more your standard video, uh, video meters where you probably want to keep it under the zero. But you can see if I peek there, how it goes up red, which is something that you want to avoid. So a couple different ways to read that. And then the final, the picture view here, it's telling me the format, 1080p24. That's what we're running at today. We look at a color view, a black and white view, or I'm not sure the blue, blue channel view. I'm not really sure what that's for. So that's going to be fun to figure out as well. So that's what that's what we've got so far. It's a really cool system. Uh, I'm thrilled that I finally got it working. So now I can start matching. As first of all, get this camera accurate and then start matching it to other cameras, which becomes really important when you're mixing cameras from manufacturers, right? So I've got a Lumix GH4 over here, and this is the Blackmagic Ultra, no, uh, 4K Ultra Pocket. Not what the hell is this thing called? Well, I'll stick a link to it. I forget what it's called. Oh, we did a video. Okay, there. Click that to see the video that was an unboxing first look at this camera. Uh, I will be doing a part two of that. I've been waiting to do the part two until I got this so I could talk about the calibrations. Now that I've got that, I'll be able to do that, which is great. And then we'll do a part two on this as well because on this uh, pocket scope thing, because I think that once I figure out everything that it can do, it'll be even more interesting to see what it can do. So that 
is that. That's all I'm going to do today. Hey, guys, um, like my video or don't like it. That's cool, too. If you don't like it, if you want to thumbs down it, I'm good with that. Just do me a favor. Tell me why. Throw me the thing in the comments. Tell me why you don't like it. But if you do like it, give me a thumbs up. Those thumbs up help a lot. They help more than you'd think, actually, as far as getting these videos promoted around and growing the channel and all that good stuff. Of course, if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. And as soon as I stop talking here, if you're watching this recorded, you're going to see a thing that comes up, a little four square, and there's a subscribe button. Hit that. If you're watching this live, you're not going to see that, but just go hit the subscribe thing. All right. That's it. I'm out of here. If there's any questions, um, it says I'm out of sync. I think, Eric, I was out of sync in the in this view. Right there, I'm possibly out of sync. It seems to kind of come in and out of sync, which has been interesting. But this view, I shouldn't be out of sync. And if I am, blame YouTube. Um, yeah. Oh, one more thing. Here, let me just tell you this. How I got this, what, what I'm looking at here, how I got the signal in here. This is kind of cool. So I've got a, uh, oh, someone's saying third box is white balance. Really? This thing up here is white balance? This, sorry. Uh, this guy up here is white balance? That's fascinating. So wait, if I go here, it doesn't change. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. If that's white balance, that's awesome. Thanks. Um, just is saying, where's the best place to submit questions? In the comments, right here. Uh, it's best. So you can throw up comments here now that I can answer now. That's the whole advantage of being live. If you want to ask questions afterwards, then comment there as well. It's for some reason with YouTube. I haven't figured this out. I don't know why. I've asked them. I'm waiting for an answer. Uh, this whole live conversation that's happening disappears on the hosted video, on the, the final video. So what we always do uh, almost always do is we replace this live one with a rendered one because I can get a better quality of it. I can sweeten the audio a little bit. And then I add my, add my little four square that you're going to see any moment now, if you're watching this recording, um, which I can't do to the live one. And since we lose the comments anyway, we've been basically locking the live one. It's still available, but it's only available if you already have the URL. And then we replace it with the, the actual recorded one, which if you're watching this recorded, you're watching this now. If you're watching this live, then you're not watching that now. Does that make any sense? Anyway, I want to tell you this thing. So this signal, how am I getting this signal in here? So my ATEM switcher, which I promise one day I will do a full on behind the scenes how this whole thing works. Uh, has many different outputs on it and there are auxiliary outputs and the auxiliary output can show any number of things. If I, this is just kind of cool. Now, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but it's just kind of fun to see. So here, take a look at this. Uh, where are we just go to this screen here. So this is the control board for my switcher. And I am looking at right now, let's see, can, oh, you know, I wonder if I can do, I can't do a split screen with this. Okay, so right now we're seeing me on here. And that me on here is coming out of auxiliary three. That's the Blackmagic uh, micro camera. If I set this to program, so let's see here, there's my program out and I go here, you're going to see in here the same thing that the audience is saying, which doesn't work for this video because then I can't get me on here. So I had to run a separate cable down from the auxiliary and set that to this camera, the VMD micro camera, so that it shows up here. Is that, I mean, that's like really inside baseball, but I thought it was kind of cool. Anyway, uh, someone's asking, do you have an ETN when is the Sean from Panasonic? Yes, yes, we are recording on Monday. Sean from Panasonic is scheduled, anything can change, but we're scheduled for Monday evening. We're not going to do it live. Um, we're scheduled for Monday evening to have part two of the GH5 conversation. Um, just last night, I finished compiling all the questions. So that is going to get off to him in advance. So he has a, a little heads up on the very, very long list of questions that are coming to him. So Monday, that's hopefully getting recorded. Probably I'll, I'll want to edit it up a little bit. So we'll probably get that up online by Wednesday of next week, assuming, of course, that we don't have to change the schedule. Uh, what else is, is different? Um, Travis is saying sync is definitely different for each person watching. Depends on their connection and YouTube, really. If it's out of sync, you always hit refresh um, or even just pause and start again. Um, comments used to stay in place on the recording, but they changed that early on when they introduced it. They haven't shown any signs of bringing that back. Okay, interesting, Travis. So I'll, I'll update you if they respond to my uh, support email of asking about that. And that's it. Um, and Burns Tech is very excited because I know you had questions on the GH5 video, didn't you? All right, guys, that's it. We're out of here. See you next time. Bye-bye.